I am a fountain fanatic uh, in, in real life and on the game. I've always liked them since I was a little kid. My grandma had a fountain in her backyard, and I loved that thing for some reason. Uh, and ever since then, I've uh, I've always had like a fountain. I got a fountain on my front porch right now. It's not plugged in, and it's not doing anything. But hey, the weather's starting to get warm. Probably gonna have to put some water in it and get it going. Fountain that takes the bold step of not making fountain sounds. That's it. Hello and welcome to this how to guide for the new waterfalls and fountains in the City Skylines workshop. I'm this old gamer and I'm thrilled to have you along for the ride today. And today we're going to be looking at these new assets by. STM Santana, Ryuchi Kamanogi, and to make Ryuchi's props work properly, you're going to need Ronix 69's Anim UV Params, at least according to the Steam Workshop page, that is what you need for the waterfalls to work properly. So here is a good look at the waterfalls and the jet of water. There's five different options for the waterfall. The jet of water is one asset that is considered a building. It plops down as a building on the game, but uh, I know that's a little bit harder to see there, but it's to the right. See, I told you, it's there. So for this first example, we're just going to take this small creek, a uh, small stream here in my map, and the first thing we're going to do is we are going to use terraforming. We're just going to use our small brush size here. We'll just bring it down to 15 here. And we're just going to make like a little ledge here and just a little flat spot that we can add some rocks to. You don't have to do that, but that will allow your rocks to set nice and easy right there on that ledge and make things a little bit easier for you. So now that we have that nice little spot, we're just going to throw in a bunch of rocks. We'll just kind of put them all over the place here. Those are prop rocks and they can go basically anywhere. You can use move it to raise them or to sink them a little bit further. If you use the rocks that are considered buildings, I do recommend doing that at the very first and not doing them later because they can have a tad bit of an adjustment to your terrain. So we're going to use the regular size waterfall here uh, and we're just going to sink that down using move it. We'll hit page down and we will sink that down right into the stream. We'll go ahead and put a second one in right next to the first one here. And then these rocks are going to kind of serve as uh, where this water is going to be cascading over. Now you can also use the riffles, which I will use in a moment here. But I prefer using the actual waterfalls, even though this is not exactly what they're intended for. It gives you a wider look and it's a little bit easier to deal with, especially if you're not going to do procedure objects, if you're just going to be using Move It. This is a easier way to go. Here I am using the riffles on this one isolated rock that's a little bit upstream from the rest of it. Uh, then we're just going to add a few more rocks here and we'll even put a few on the side of this creek bed for good measure. There, that's fine. We'll sink those into the ground just a bit. And then once we get that kind of set up, we can actually just take this entire thing and we'll use our marquee selector and we'll just select the entire thing and then we're just going to copy and paste it right up here. And now we have two little stream features. Add in a few little logs there that have fallen down from the uh, current and voila, just a real simple way to add some detail to a creek or a stream on your game. This next example is going to be similar to the first one but just kind of on a larger scale. Now for this one you will need procedure objects. The good thing about these waterfalls being a prop uh, you can adjust them in procedure objects and they will continue to operate correctly so they'll continue to move the way that you want them to move. 
Now the tricky part of this is 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 the following. You like in this situation, the map maker Sidai, uh, this is Two Brothers Island, by the way, uh, attempted to kind of make a waterfall naturally and uh, did a pretty good job actually. But um, because of that, the way this is set up, you actually have to somewhat use your procedure objects to adjust how this waterfall looks because you want that waterfall to go right up against the side of the actual water flow. So we'll just use procedure object, objects and just kind of grab these little portions of this waterfall to adjust it. And then we're going to copy and paste and add an additional one. So this is a total of three separate waterfalls in this uh, one, little, one little part uh, in this one cascade. And then we'll just kind of continue to adjust it somewhat. We'll make this one just a tad bit longer and then sink it back in. Kind of rotate it. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. And yeah, we'll just kind of rotate it a little bit too much there. Let's see if we can just pull that back over. So there'll be a lot of little details that you have to do, especially if you're using procedure objects. Those of you who are somewhat familiar with it, it can be a little bit more time consuming but you get some fantastic results when it is all said and done. And uh, this is just a nice little feature for a larger portion of this river. All right, now example three is going to be a fun one. This is a very large drop off. And again, we're gonna use procedure objects. We're going to extend this waterfall very very tall and one thing I will advise you is when you're making these very large drop-off waterfalls you will notice that there is quite a bit of you have to do a lot of rotating and you have to kind of make it work based on where it is already on the map so again Sid I did an excellent job making this waterfall and when he made this map, this prop did not exist. I'm sure if it did exist, he would have used it. But that being said, there is a bit of a slant to where the water is coming off the side of this mountain. So in order to combat that, you have to rotate your waterfall and dip it in just a tad. So that's no problem at all. Also in this circumstance, there is kind of like three individual levels to this waterfall so you have it coming around that curve at the top there and you have it dropping down a bit more and then you have the actual big drop which is the part that I'm working on now so like I was saying there is multiple levels to this waterfall so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the top of the first waterfall the tallest portion of it and we're just gonna grab some of the elements of this using procedure objects and just kind of bring it in where it kind of expands and and you can experiment with this i wouldn't worry about trying to grab individual triangles of that prop you want to just grab use your marquee selector and just move some in and see how it looks so i've added some additional rocks and then we've also added a third tier of this and we're going to kind of move that a little bit around so it kind of fits in just a little bit better there just like so and like I said just little tweaks here or there using your procedure objects but just make sure that you do add those rocks because that's what's going to kind of help you from having to worry too much about the details and stuff of this um, ultimately once you get everything in place you can kind of Put those rocks wherever you'd like to put them uh, but uh, a lot of times you will run into this situation where you have multiple levels and the best way to to deal with that is just making sure that you use multiple waterfall pieces this is not possible without procedure objects if you are using procedure objects you can definitely do this but this is more of a, a procedure objects build on this particular waterfall.
For example four, we're going to be using everybody's favorite giant boulder with the cave in the middle. Now, I know what you're saying, where is this water flow coming from? That's for you to figure out. I'm not going to completely rebuild a portion of the map to do this. I just kind of picked where there was a pond so the water had a natural place to land. What we're doing here is very simplistic. So we're just taking, using procedure objects again, we are taking these regular size waterfalls and just putting them using two of them and putting them together where it appears like there's a stream coming out of that rock and it's a very simple way to do something fun with this feature water doesn't necessarily have to come out of that rock you don't necessarily have to have water really coming out of it but the prop itself makes that animation and makes this possible I'm glad I built this. I'll probably keep it here. I gotta figure out where to connect it to though. Example 5 is actually from my latest Cities with John episode, uh, episode 11, where I built an amusement park. This is the waterfall feature, one of two waterfall features in that amusement park that I built. And the first step that I did is I just raised a big hill there. And then I put down a bunch of rocks and then I actually used, believe it or not, the backyard swimming pool props. The reason I did that is it made a nice landing spot for this water and Unfortunately, those pools are not compatible with procedure objects. I'm sure there are some pools in the workshop that are, but what I ended up doing is just using that pool prop over and over again in different ways. So there you get a good shot of it. I know it kind of looks funny now, but uh, we're using that pool as a runoff to where this water goes. So that way it looks a little bit more natural and doesn't look like it's coming out of a, a, a rock or the side of a mountain. Then we're just going to use these rocks to completely fill up the gaps. We're also going to be using in a moment a wall to kind of serve as a barrier from this collapsing, so to speak. So here's our little wall. We're just going to stick it right here in the middle of this hill. And the reason we're doing that is, keep in mind, this is an artificial waterfall. So it's okay that there's a retaining wall there. And of course you could use a retaining wall just about in any situation when it comes to like the side of a mountain or something like that. But for this, we've got a little retaining wall. Then we're going to be raising these up. And all I'm doing here is basically just using move it, using page up, page down, adjusting things all over the place. You will not use procedure objects uh, for something like this on this scale. This was completely done with just move it and some little tricks of the trade. One quick note about rocks that are props, rock props. If you copy them using control C or the copy function on move it, you don't always get the same size and so that requires you to kind of do a little bit of adjusting you might get a rock that comes it, it looks like you're about to copy a large rock but then when you actually place it it's a small one and vice versa so it's not really that big of a deal because you want to use a lot of rocks I mean I probably used 50 rocks for just this waterfall alone but that's okay. So we're going to use these little riffles just to kind of go around these rocks. You have to do a little bit of adjusting here or there because what you'll see here in a second is I was placing these riffles down and didn't really realize it, but see how they're sticking out a little far? We don't want that, so we'll kind of take these and kind of adjust them back toward that pool on top. Uh, then I just kind of use the rocks to cover up the edges of that pool. Um, of course we don't want it to look, actually look like there is a pool there but um, you can definitely do some uh, detailing around those using rocks and and eventually uh, you can also use 
vegetation of different type as well. This was my first waterfall build and I just love the way that it turned out for this amusement park. For my final example today, we're going to be creating a water feature right in the middle of this canal. Now, the way that I'm doing this is first off, we used a non-terraforming curb. Uh, I believe it is actually listed as a planter that could float on the water. And as you can see, I decorated it with some hedges and lettering. Cape Town is this district in my town that is uh, got a lot of uh, really overpriced stores. And then I just used a simple pillar that I believe is actually a tram road pillar. And those are going to serve as pipes that the water is going to come out of. Now we're going to put these little water jets on each corner of this. And then for the actual pipes, we're going to use procedure objects. And we're going to kind of extend this waterfall just a tad. And we're going to make the illusion that it's coming out of those pipes that way it just kind of comes right out the side right at the top and I think that looks fantastic it's kind of got like a, uh, a punky Brewster look to it for some reason well that's about it for my seven examples of waterfalls and fountain functions in city skylines I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed building it. If you feel compelled, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for more content, and come along for each and every episode. We'll see you next time. I'm This Old Gamer. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye bye.